Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 178 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today's episode, Jimmy Diabetes, is sponsored by Dexcom, Omnipod, and our newest sponsor, Dancing for Diabetes. Dancing for Diabetes spreads awareness through the art of dance to better educate the community, raise funds to find a cure, and to inspire those with diabetes to live healthy and active lives. Now, from now until the end of the year, in little 20 second increments, every once in a while on the podcast, I'm going to pop in and tell you something interesting about Dancing for Diabetes. They're not trying to sell you anything. They just want you to know more about them. Now, our other sponsors, Dexcom and Omnipod, they're trying to sell you something. Omnipod wants you to buy the greatest tubeless insulin pump the world has ever known. And Dexcom would really like it if you looked into the G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor. You can go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box, MyOmnipod.com forward slash juice box, or dancingfordiabetes.com, dancing, the number four, diabetes.com. You can find these links at juiceboxpodcast.com in the show notes of your podcast app, or I guess you could type them into your browser, but then the sponsors don't know you came from me. I mean, you can do that, but you know what I'm saying? I think you do. In this episode, I'm going to be speaking with Natalie. Natalie has had type 1 diabetes for a couple of years. She's in her early 20s. And she initially contacted me because she said she was killing it with multiple daily injections. But by the time she got on the podcast, she had a pump. Still, the conversation was really amazing. It went into a couple of different directions I didn't expect. We got into some management ideas. We got into some theories. And at the end, we talked about MDI. So you're going to get that too. Please don't forget that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should ever be considered advice, medical or otherwise, and to always consult a physician before making changes to your medical plan. I think you're going to like this one. Natalie's got a, a certain something. Hello. Good morning. Oh, you're nice and clear. Good start. Good. And I think Mercury's in retrograde or whatever, and usually that is like tech problems. You're starting to talk about things I don't know about now. Let's dive in. So you're saying that when, <laughs> when we're recording, obviously, when um, Mercury is in retrograde. So put that into layman's terms for me. Okay. So I'm sure other people that listen to this are going to like say that I'm totally wrong because I don't know too much about it. But I know that whenever Mercury goes into retrograde, which is some celestial event, um, Technology, I guess, just becomes a big problem for, for some people. Really? This is interesting. Yeah. Okay. For me, printers. Actually, it does affect me, and anytime I try to print anything, I, it doesn't work. <laughs> I love this. So, okay. So if stuff starts happening for you, just blame the planets. I have, I've been blaming recently um, our poor decision to have pets and children. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I have two bulldogs and I'm always like, why did I do this? Yeah. This morning, um, at four o'clock in the morning, Arden's, we got, you know, Arden's, uh, Dexcom went off and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I pulled myself into the other room and it just needed to be calibrated. It was just a bad, it was just bad timing. So mm-hmm. I tested, I calibrated, I gave her some insulin that she needed and I sat back down and I thought, well, I don't want to go right back to sleep. I want to make sure this insulin's going to work. So I ended up sitting up for like an hour, which I shouldn't have done. But then it's five o'clock and I'm like, okay, I still have two solid hours of sleep. I can get, I close my eyes and it's six o'clock. I can hear Indy downstairs. He's like, eh, like whining. And I'm like, oh, okay, he needs to go outside. So then I went downstairs. I took him outside. <laughs> I came back in. It's like six oh seven, six oh seven. I'm now counting minutes, you know. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, I can still get like fifty minutes of sleep if I power myself back to sleep right now. Yeah. And I overslept uh, right through my alarm. Arden slept through her alarm. She was late for school. Um, and I just said to my wife, I said, "Hey, on my headstone, no matter what kills me, just write dogs and diabetes got this guy." It just just put that yeah. stuff right on. <laughs> oh my god, that should go on mine too. Can I take that from you? Because every actually, I was just <laughs> I was just telling somebody. I said in tonight's episode of "Is My Life a Joke," <laughs> I had like a I had Dex alarms for like hours, just saying I was low, and I I was low for 
part of it, but then I had just did a new sensor. Right. And I don't know about you, but I always get like 24 hours of just crazy readings. Okay. Yeah, when I put in a new sensor. It doesn't happen to us like I hear it happen to other people. Like, But last night was one of those where it was like, her blood sugar is 96. It needs to be calibrated. And then I calibrated it. And it was like 140. I was like, well, that's not the same thing. And, You're um, like, that's like... <laughs> slightly different <laughs> so and it's not the worst thing in the world so i bolus and everything yeah. it was all good but yeah i know some people have the first couple hours of the first day have an issue but um yeah 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 where the numbers don't look right it's all it's interesting because i was just talking to someone at xcom the other day and i asked a question about how that little sensor wire works and the answer was mm-hmm. the, the answer was very much this is proprietary proprietary information and we can't talk about this with you and i was like okay but you know it's it's amazing that that little wire it's insane right does that you, you, you know so and it's coated with something and the coating has to absorb the fluid and I'm like oh my god this is it's, who thought of that I, I and then you're co- you're connected via like Bluetooth like yeah I know. you're like a Bluetooth signal <laughs> it's crazy to me and and same with um so I have an Omnipod too mm-hmm. and I'm like I have no idea how any of this works. But I'm so glad that it does because it makes my life so much easier. But I, I, I have no clue how any of it actually works. Yeah, Natalie, if I was on the Mayflower, we'd be like eight miles from Plymouth Rock right now. Because I, <laughs> I would have been like, we should yeah. set out. And then I would have gotten to like a river and been like, well, I guess this is where we live. Because, I mean, how would you get to the other side of that? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't have the engineering spirit, I don't believe. But uh but the people oh, who do I are don't. amazing. Yeah, no, no. It, it's a uh, it's a specific way of thinking, and uh, it really helps everybody. So I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Natalie, let's um, let's just say that um, you're on the podcast today because you say you say you are killing it. You know how to kill it with MDI. Is that correct? I do. Okay. I All know right. how to kill it with MDI, and actually, I just got a pump in September. Mm-hmm. Oh, this so, is just a um, month and a half for you, or two months maybe. A couple all right. months. Let me do the math. September. Let's count September as one. Then October, November, it's the beginning of December. Let's call it three months. You've had a pump. Yeah. Um, okay. And and how old are you? And how long have you been living with diabetes? So I got diagnosed. I'm 24, mm-hmm. and I was diagnosed at 21. Although I should have been diagnosed more like 17. Uh, it was a pretty crazy couple of years in between 17 and 21. I didn't um, know you had a bigger story. Here we go. Okay. I'll bite. Yeah. What happened when you were 17? Because I know what happened when I was 17. Nothing. <laughs> well, <laughs> Just run around well, trying to get I'm... girls to talk to me. <laughs> but good. What happened to you? <laughs> um, well, I just, I started feeling sick at 17. And, um... But at the same time, my parents had gotten divorced, Mm -hmm. and I also had mono that year. And so I was writing a lot of stuff off as just being like, oh, well, I'm like, I had a big emotional trauma or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm tired, or then I got mono, and that's why I'm tired. And I just, I don't know, um, I knew that there was something off, but... I just could write it off to other things. And then some time went on. And I think just intuitively, I started, like, for example, I was having a lot of digestive problems. And I figured out that gluten was causing me problems. Okay. So I cut that out and I felt a little bit better. But I think intuitively, I was, like, cutting carbs. Um. Because I felt better, obviously, my blood sugar was maybe a little bit lower. Um, And so I got to college, and I still didn't feel good. Um, But I could write it off to, you know, I was taking the maximum amount of units at college, and I was at school one day from, like, 7 a.m. to 7 Mm p.m. with a one-hour break, you know. so I just thought, well, I'm just working myself too hard, but maybe my thyroid's off. So I went and got that checked, and they're like, no, it's kind of normal. And by the time I was a junior in college, 
I was like done. Um, <laughs> just, just laying on the ground. You're like, this is basically, it. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like, this is the end of me. Something is so wrong. And, um, I was having, my heart rate was like all over the place. I had developed a tachycardia. My blood pressure was super low. And then of course I developed the insane amount of thirst and, you know, I started looking up, um, like symptoms Mm -hmm. and everything that I had, it would like list five things. And one of them would be diabetes. It was always diabetes. Yeah. And I literally not, it wasn't even a denial thing. It was just like a, I thought that there was no possible way I could have diabetes because I thought you get it when you're like a little kid. Okay. Cause I was just so misinformed. Right. Yeah, no, I understand. So I, I just like literally brushed it off. Like, that's just weird that all like, huh, how crazy is that? That <laughs> something's wrong <laughs> like with have, me that mimics diabetes, but it's I'm clearly like, not <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> but yeah. it's obviously not. Right. So, so, so let I, me ask you a quick question. When you, so you had these digestive issues that you, you kind of limited your carbs and gluten for, um, and then you were tired and all this stuff happened when you were diagnosed, did it like, did all that stuff magically go away? Do you still have some of those issues? Did your thyroid end up being an issue? Um, I, most of it did go away. Okay. Um, my, I still get a weird heart rate thing. Um, if my blood sugar is high. Dancing for Diabetes holds an annual show in Orlando, Florida. Award-winning and nationally recognized performers create an evening of entertainment and hope. These performers are champions throughout the performing arts community and in the hearts of those affected by diabetes. Find out more at dancingfordiabetes.com. That's dancing, the number four, diabetes.com. I'll get like a tachycardia if my blood sugar is high. You know what I realized? Because you've used the word twice now, tachycardia. And I realized that I have no idea what it means. But because I've watched Grey's Anatomy for so much of my life, I have an inherited feeling inside of me that I understand (laughs) the word. It's um, Um, (coughs) It just means that my heart rate is, um, it's an irregular beat and it's fast. Okay. Well, that's not my understanding so, from Grace Anatomy, but okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you might be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, who knows? Um, but yeah, um, right before diagnosis, it was, I mean, I'd be sitting and it was like 40. My heart rate would be like 40. Mm-hmm. And then I would just stand and do nothing. And it would be like 125. Doing absolutely nothing. Have you ever had it looked um, into further? Did what? Have you ever had your heart like tested or looked into further? Well, so I went to my doctor and I said, okay, I've figured it out. My, I, my heart rate is crazy. And she was like, no, that's like, that's super rare. You don't have that. And then she tested it and went, oh my God, you do have it. Let's just get some blood work um, just to rule everything else out. Okay. And I said, okay. So she did blood work. She had, she had called a cardiologist for me and, um, they called me, the office called me and they said, okay, your blood work came in and you're all clear. Everything's good. So just go to the cardiologist. And I said, okay, well, I don't even know why I said this because typically at this point I trusted doctors, Mm -hmm. which I no longer do. Um, except for my new endo is the bomb. Um, but at the time, you know, I said, well, you just send me a copy of the blood work. Okay. I just want to know what they were looking at. And she said, yeah. So um, I ended up, I came home from work one day of my summer job and I opened the letter and it was like glaring. It was huge, red bolded letters that my, I think my fasting blood sugar was 538 or something like that. And of course I started Googling what the heck is this? Yeah. Right. And it kept saying over 126. It's like for sure you're diabetic. And I'm like, well, this, this is, this over is 126. like, this is like way over 126. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like panicking. 
Right. And um, we called we called the doctor, and she's like, "Oh, that can't be right. Let me. I'll call you back." Calls me back, and she's like, "Yeah, you need to go to the emergency room." <laughs> You guys are spot Hello. on here. Really helped me. What part of the country did you live in at this time, uh, Natalie? So none of us moved there. Was um, it? <laughs> don't move to Napa Valley, California. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. At least don't get your health care in that vicinity. No, um, <laughs> the, the craziest thing was that she was a concierge doctor, which is like, you know, they're supposed to like only have a few patients and like they're really on it. Right. And she was clearly not on it. Yeah, I spent like four days in the hospital. And, um, and I ended up with diabetes and here we are. No kidding. Yeah. That really is, that's interesting that they just, maybe they thought your heart had diabetes and not you, um, because they were just testing for your heart. But you, that, you do wonder how, um, how a number like that would get missed on a test. That's, that's insane. How do you miss? I mean, it was like, I opened it and I'm like, it was so obvious. Right. And her, she said that, um, so many people come into her practice and think they have diabetes, and they don't. So she's just used to telling people they don't have it. So, you, so diabetes is the uh, is the cry of wolf uh, in, in uh, her practice. I yeah, guess yeah. so. Well, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah. you, so you're diagnosed for reals, and how old are you then? Twenty one. I was twenty one. Okay, and and have your other maladies? You say your other maladies have kind of like kind of everything sort of settled in a little bit, I guess. Like you don't, they, do you still, are you still gluten free for instance? I, I've been trying to sort of like sneak gluten in there and it's like gluten just really doesn't like me. Okay. So I'm like, you know, at this point there's so many ways to get around it that I'm cool with it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I feel so much better. I mean, between being 17 and being 21, like, I was, it was like just years of being completely exhausted. And so now, um, I'm almost like grateful that I'm like diagnosed finally because I have so much more energy. I feel so much better. I didn't remember what it felt like to like feel normal. That's a sentiment I've heard from so many people that, you know, I, I don't want to have this thing, but I am so glad to know about it because the alternative, you know, not being treated properly was was just a hell on earth kind of a situation. I, I think to, yeah. to, to maybe go off the path for a second, it's, it, it's a great time to make the point that it might be a little difficult to stay after your blood sugar a little bit, but you know, an elevated blood sugar will make you not feel well. Whether you are currently using daily insulin injections or a traditional tube pump to manage your diabetes, the two-part Omnipod insulin management system can simplify insulin delivery and help you to live your life on your own terms. You should become part of the Potter community. The Potter community has over 100,000 members and it's growing every day. Are you living with type 1 diabetes, type 2, gestational, latent autoimmune? It doesn't matter. The Omnipod system may be a perfect fit for you. And here's how you're gonna find out. And by the way, before I tell you how to find out, did you know that the Omnipod is the number one preferred pump for children? But that doesn't mean adults don't love it. You know what you need? You need a completely free, no obligation demo sent to your home. And Omnipod would love to do that for you. You're going to go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. And there, by filling out your name and address and like nothing else, Omnipod is going to send you a free, no obligation demo pod today. You can put it on, wear it, and see what you think. I mean, that's a great offer. It's free and there's no obligation and you actually get to hold it, touch it, feel it, try it. Nothing better than that. Myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. The link's in your show notes at juiceboxpodcast.com and you are well on your way to becoming part of the Potter community. Those are D's. You can hear that. My accent's not messing this up. Like you don't think you're about to join like a Harry Potter group, right? It's Potter, P-O-D-D-E-R, Omnipod. I figure you're following along. Let's get back to Natalie. An elevated blood sugar will make you not feel well. And at some point, at some point you might get accustomed to it. And now you are just having less of an experience 
being alive than you would if your blood sugar was lower. And, and this sadness is, is you get, you get accustomed to it. And so yeah. you, you get something you just, taken from you and, and you almost just accept that it's gone at some point. Right. And I think that that is why I got so good with, and with daily injections, because it was like, once I got a like taste of what it felt like to feel good, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, hell no. Yeah. Am I ever going to, um, you know, run high again or, or um, feel that bad again? Yeah, I, I, I think like, that I think people undervalue. Like I, I hear a lot, like I'll put up, I have some posts that I think are fairly popular online about like they're just charts of like art and eating Chinese food or pancakes or something like that. And you uh-huh. see her blood sugar not go over like 110 while she's eating Chinese, you know, for hours and hours. Excuse me, uh, making noise over here. It, it goes on for like hours and hours at a time. And some people are like get inspired by it. They're like, "Wow, I see what you did. I'm going to try that." And some people, yeah. and some people go, "That looks like a lot of work." And I think, like, would you rather put the effort in like right here in the span of this 10 minutes, or spend the entirety of like the next four and five hours feeling oh, feeling like heck and, and 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 fighting with the blood sugar the whole time, right? Yeah. A like, little more insulin, little more. This might do it. I'll drink some water. Like all this stuff. Before you know it, you know your your endeavor to eat Chinese food at 7:30 has turned into you up at one o'clock now. Going, oh god, I hope yeah. I, don't get, I hope I don't get low <laughs> now. I've been giving myself insulin all night or like whatever yeah. it ends up being, and. And it's I like, think, is it really worth it at that point? You're yeah, like, yeah. And, and I think it's really valuable. Like, by, by the time this episode goes up, people who are listening are have going to have heard probably months ago at this point, like in, in podcast time. But Chris Freeman talk about preparation. He's trying to, he's trying to cross-country ski, and it's like fifth Olympics or something like that. And wow. he talks about how it's possible with preparation. Uh, you don't know Natalie and no one else does, but everyone does by now that next week you're going to see an episode go up with the Dodgers pitcher, Brandon Morrow from the, the guy who pitched in the world series with type one diabetes. Oh my God. Awesome. He talks about the same thing when he's talking to me, he calls it, I don't know. He didn't call it preparation. He called it something else, but having a plan, I think, but, but you have to put some effort in up front to get this desired result, or at least get closer to your desired result. And that effort can't be looked on as a pain because you have diabetes. Like that's yeah. like, I'm sorry, you, you know, you, you lost the unluckiest lottery in the world. You have type one diabetes. Now you're going to have to put more effort in around these situations. If not, everything's going to take more effort. And yeah, you know, you got to decide where are you going to put that effort in? I guess. So I like the way you're thinking about it. I like the way you're thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like type 1 community is one of resilience. Oh, for sure. Because it's like you get knocked down all, it's like, who would have thought that, like, I could be taken out by a banana? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's so dumb. If I don't get but, any insulin and I eat this cookie, I'll be dead in six days. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, it's so right. stupid. So, but it's like you have to... I think that you have to, yeah, you have to put in the work. You have to know your body mm-hmm. and, and sort of know, you know, sometimes I'm learning with the Omnipod, it'll, it'll suggest, you know, however many units for whatever. And sometimes I think to myself, like, nope, I know I'm going to need more, a little bit more than that and yeah. bump it up. And I think you just sort of, no, you start you start to get to know yourself better, and you just have to. Well, I, um, I think that what you just said is such a yeah a core of like what I'm thinking. First of all, you said diabetes is so stupid, which it might be the episode of, uh, title. Although I was leaning toward mer- Mercury's in retrograde, but um, yeah. at the, at the, but both you, things are really dumb. Yeah, <laughs> both things are really <laughs> dumb. Diabetes and Mercury, both and, really yeah. dumb. Just really dumb. But what you just said is just, it's so incredibly important, which is, you know, you said, you know, your pump tells you this, but that, the, the, it tells you based on numbers that you or your doctor put in that said, Hey, for every amount of this carbs you eat, this is how much insulin you take. But that's not how your body works. You know, right. if, if you didn't have diabetes 
say you didn't have diabetes and you picked up a slice of pizza, there's not a process where your brain goes, oh, that's a slice of pizza. We might as well just give her the 1.635 extra units of insulin right now right. Out, of her, out of her pancreas. It, mm -hmm. it, you're, it, it affects your blood sugar as much as it does, and your body fights it as much as it has to. And that and one of the, the pitfalls I think that people fall into is that concept of, well, this is, this is my basal rate. My basal rate's 0. 0.6. My blood sugar's 160. I don't understand why it's 160. Well, you don't have enough basal insulin right now. You haven't eaten in hours, you yeah. know, and your blood sugar's sitting high. Your basal insulin's not enough. And when you say it to somebody, they go, oh, that makes so much sense. But they don't think about it because the doctor told them, this is your basal rate. So uh -huh. if your blood sugar is high, it can't be that because we've already decided that that's your basal rate. And the same thing with insulin to carb ratio. We've already decided that's 30 carbs. And that means you need this much insulin. If right. you get high afterwards, it can't be that. You count the carbs right. And then that throws you into hours of like questioning yourself, questioning the world. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're just like, what? I don't understand what my happened. Existence. Yeah, I did the count. Why am right? I here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my existence. <laughs> Um, is any of that really in front of me? Am I in the matrix? That kind right? of stuff. And but but you once you learn to think past that, it really does. I don't know if you, how you find it, but I, for me, it boils right down to that very simplistic idea that I talk about all the time. If your blood sugar is high, you don't have enough insulin. It. Yeah, right, right. Or, or you mistimed it. You don't have enough. Maybe a combination yeah. of those two. And do something about it. Don't sit around for three hours going, "I wonder what's going on." Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think that one of the most, like, the biggest lie that I was told in the hospital at diagnosis, and I'm sure everybody feels this way, is the biggest lie that I was told in the hospital is basically it's a simple math equation. You calculate the carbs. And you give yourself insulin and you're good to go. Yeah. And it's like, it is so far from that. It's not even close I to mean, that. <laughs> and so that, and I think that my experience with having this doctor that was garbage um, made me, and, and I took, I had to take everything into my own hands and figure it out myself. So it's like, you know, I think I, I trust, I think you really have to trust yourself and say, yeah, my basal rate. It, it's not right. So fix it. Or I just, I just went to my uh, endo a couple weeks ago and it was the first time I'd seen her since getting my pump. And she was looking at my settings and she's like, Oh, you bump your basal up like to, you know, almost double during the night. And I said, yeah, because I was looking at all my dex patterns and I rise really high during the night. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I can't argue it with you because you have a perfect flat line. Thank you. And why Thank did you, you want to argue with me? But like, what, yeah. why, what was that's the question? What, why is her inclination to be like, oh, this is wrong? What, it, it's, I, you know, what, yeah. what, what, I would love to ask her that question. Like, what, what made her like, like get herself like her hackles up and be like, oh, I have to say something to Natalie about this. She's, yeah. she's doubling her basil at night. Why is it doubled? And I guess maybe because most people probably lower it at night. I, I don't know. I, I think that, I think that it's just such a, weird disease that is so individual mm -hmm. that it, I, I can't imagine, I mean, it's hard to find patterns in my own self. I can't imagine having patients, you know, that are all so different yeah. and trying to find some sort of common theme. Every 20 minutes when somebody said, somebody yeah. new sits down in your office, you know, you just said something that I feel like I could talk about for like an hour and try to figure out what it means. Diabetes is such an individual disease. Right. And, but if you, there's got to be a, there's a, a reason that, that that statement is true or, or not true. Right. Because mm -hmm. what does that mean exactly? Does it mean that, it, let's say your experience with your diabetes is based on your understanding of many variables. If you came into my house and um, gave your care over to me for a day or two or a week or a month, could I do a, better or worse job than you were doing. Maybe I would end up not doing as well as you did, or maybe I, like, like, do you know what I mean? Like everything yeah. we accomplish in life is based on our understanding and our, and our will to try and, you know, all these different mm -hmm. like variables, like it's, it really is like, I wonder how individual it is if it's not, 
if it's individual, but it's individual based on not so much the diabetes, but the person and their ability to absorb, understand, and put into practice everything that needs yeah. to happen. Do you know what That's I mean? That's a good point. Mm-hmm. So it just always strikes me that way. Like I, I, I could be wrong. You, you know what I mean? But I just, yeah. it, it just, it, if there's a, um, I don't know, if we take two exactly, you know, two cars that are exactly the same and put two different drivers in it and send them out on a race, one of them's going to get to the end before the other one. Was that the car or was that the driver? Like, do you, do you mm, know? Do good you, point. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. is it, in, so it, it, I only say that because I think saying, I think that when people say in the community, when they say, well, diabetes is such a personal thing, I get that, but I, I get scared sometimes that they're using that as an excuse. Like, you don't understand. My diabetes is so right. much different than your diabetes. That's why my yeah. A1C is this and yours is that. This is not my fault. It's, it's the diabetes. I got the special kind of Jimmy diabetes and I'm Jimmy. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? You've got the Nat diabetes. And yeah. so your Nat diabetes are way better than my Jimmy diabetes. And so, yes. by the oh, way, we'll Jimmy diabetes that. is almost the episode title at this point. So, um, but, but, but my, but my point is, is that, is that, that that's not, that's a fair statement, but right. Like, mm-hmm. but it shouldn't stop it, but it ends up stopping people. It ends up giving them an excuse to stop because, and it's not an excuse. It's they think that they've reached the pinnacle of what they can do. It's that, um, yes. did you ever hear anybody say I have brittle diabetes? Yeah. yeah. You know, that is yeah, not an actual like, medical distinction. Sure that's not a thing. Yeah, it's yeah. The, it, but it, but it is a well held, firmly understood concept in the, in the diabetes world that is accepted by people and doctors. Oh, I have brittle diabetes. I'm and, and 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 I'm sure some people have these horrible versions of you know their bodies are just a a, a, a dumpster fire and and, yeah. and everything is worse for them and that sucks. But then somebody else comes along who doesn't understand how insulin works, gets real low after giving themselves way too much insulin and goes, oh, I'm a brittle diabetic. Well, no, you're not. Right. You just didn't. You didn't use the insulin right. Yeah, you know? I couldn't and so, figure it out. And and it's not the. It, it's cool that that happened to them. Like I understand it happening. I just get worried that then, the the label stops it's them a from. Yeah, the label stops them from trying to understand it further. Right. Let's play a game. What's covered by Medicare is permitted by the FDA to be used with zero finger sticks. Is available for iPhone and Android allows you to see a loved one's blood sugar no matter where they are in the world and has been an integral part an integral 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 and has been an integral oh oh i lost the word important and has been an important part of how i've kept arden's a1c between 5.6 and 6.2 for over four years you know what i'm talking about dexcom the g6 continuous glucose monitor did you really not know you know, you're just being nice to me. I appreciate that. You hear every week about how I take the data that comes from Arden's Dexcom G6 and I make split second and sometimes long-term decisions about how to adjust her insulin, her basal rates, her boluses, temp basals. These are the ways we bump and nudge. There's no song in there. These are the way we bump and nudge, we bump and nudge, we bump and nudge. There's no song there whatsoever. I'm sorry. But that information, wow, 178 episodes, people. What do you want? Just buy the Dexcom and I can stop doing this. (laughs) The information, sincerely, the information that I get back from the CGM, from the Dexcom G6, that's how I decide. I'm looking at Arden's blood sugar right now, 92, nice and steady, after a giant bowl of Apple Jacks. Did I get the first bolus right? No, I didn't. But the Dexcom told me that. It said, ooh, this is trying to go up. And I was able to bolus more 20 minutes after the initial bolus. I was able to set a temp basal and then shut it off when I needed to. That's what you need this Dexcom for. Forget the music. Go to Dexcom.com forward slash juicebox. Go to the links in my show notes. Go to juicebox. Go to juiceboxpodcast.com and click there. Just try it. Trust me, it works, even if I've messed this ad completely up. My mom always said that she had a cousin that was type 1 that was a brittle diabetic. And then she, has, she always says, well, she also would um, 
drink Pepsis all day and smoke cigarettes. And I'm like, she wasn't a brittle diabetic. <laughs> just like didn't care. She didn't care. <laughs> I'm she like, had okay. the special kind of Jimmy diabetes. That's what right. that's what she had. Yeah, yeah. And so therefore, it, it just look. There are going to be some people who hear this and get mad, and I get that. But I'm sure. But you have to. Everybody yeah. gets mad at something. It's. You have you know, to you have to listen to what through what I'm saying here is that like if you're having these horrible issues you have to you have to look for other answers not not say oh I'm just the guy who this doesn't work for mine and, is especially hard right, right? right no you can do it that's the thing is like it's going to be really hard but like you definitely can figure it out yeah it's, and you might not be able to figure it out on your own by the way it, it, it and that that's no. an important it distinction. It might take a long time too. Yeah, and it might take it, it might take a long time. But there, my, my point is, is that very likely there is a combination of answers that will be that w- when put together, they 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 will make your answer to your problem. Mm-hmm. And and maybe that's impossible to find. Maybe it's difficult to find. Maybe at the moment you don't know the right an- questions to ask or the right people to ask. But don't give up because there there is a combination in there that will work for most people. Now again, please don't get me wrong. There are some people whose whose health is just at a different space. But that's not most of us. Yeah. Right. And so and so. Yeah. I, I, I just, I get, I don't want to fall into the, you know, I talk about on here that doctors sometimes are guilty of doing like least common denominator teaching where they teach to who they expect is the least intelligent person they're going to see all day. You, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or the person who has the least ability to understand diabetes all day. And then everyone gets that basic information. And I don't want the podcast to become that where you're just like, well, yeah. let's, you know, let's only talk about this spot because what if there's a person here who doesn't get it? You'll leave them out. I don't want to leave them out. I want to pull them in and tell them, look, just get in here and fight yeah. with us. You know, there's mm-hmm. an answer. Um, and, and I've seen it. Natalie, I've, I've spoken to people privately and on this podcast who are as lost as lost could be. And they find their way out eventually. They just need, they just need better, you know, they need better ideas sometimes. Yeah. And ways to use them. So. Totally. Yeah. So, so I'm sorry. So, uh, so you, <laughs> you were for a few years using MDI. And, yeah. And you were having. Look at we're 30 minutes in. We're never going to get to this. We part. haven't even talked. We're about We're never going to get to this part. But you <laughs> felt. You said you felt like you were doing really well with MDI. Did you have MDI and a CGM? No, I I was fully old school until just recently. Basically, I got the CGM. In March, and then I got the pump in September. But let me ask you one question, that, and then I'm going to let you roll with this for a second. Okay. Were you good at it, or were you just testing at spots where your blood sugar looked good? Because I see that you, with people sometimes. Some people, people are like, I ate dinner and gave myself my needle, and four oh, hours no, later, no, no. I tested myself, and my blood sugar was 90. I'm so good at this, but they don't know what happened for those four hours afterwards. No, I was good at it, and my A1C actually was better on MDI than um, on my pump. So you're still figuring that, out pumping then? I'm, yes. Yeah. That being said, and it's like my A1C on the pump right now is six, oh, so it's good. not at all high, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know crazy high but on on mdi i was like 5.6 5.9 5.8 so it's very it's just you know marginally higher on the pump um and that being said i i the first couple weeks it was trying to figure out all the settings and whatnot yeah but i think uh being on mdi so long i i also really had to figure out like what certain foods did to me, what certain um, if things, if I get delayed spikes or whatever, I was always pretty diligent about testing. And um, I also am, I work out a lot. So I was always testing a lot during the day before working out and during and after. And I went through a lot of test strips. <laughs> well, and you almost end up acting like your own glucose meter when you do that too a little bit, like your own like continuous glucose. Because you start I, – I remember when Arden was younger and she was on MDI. I would I would go in and I would say the, to the doctor, like, don't pay attention to the blood sugars you're seeing on the tests because 
I'm testing at really odd times. And, and yeah. I, cause I want to see what's going on. Like, she's like, why would you test a half hour after she ate? I was like, don't you want to know what's going on a half hour after she eats? Doesn't that make sense? Curious. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, how am I going to figure this out if I don't see what's happening? And, um, yeah. and they eventually left me alone about it and stopped, you, you know, but I said, instead of saying to me, Hey, you know, you're testing her blood sugar is 300 here. We should be talking about why it's 300 and how to stop it from being 300. Not, right. not that I how tested like it the wrong it. time. You, 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 yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Like it, that's, um, your blood sugar is high if you test it or not. Right. You know what it's like? It's like when I take a selfie, here's the point. Ready? If I spend enough time and I hold that camera far enough over my head, like on the ceiling, and and I get my neck in just the right position <laughs> and the light's right, and I click the thing at the exact right time, Natalie, I look thin. Like, it's perfect. You're like, I'm, nailed I'm like, it. look at me. If everyone could just see me like this all day long, I mean, honestly, I'd probably be a male model. Yeah. But that's not what I look like all the other times. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to put that camera on the floor and shoot up at me, that yeah. is not what you would see. And so I, I think that that is a really good, you know, example of like, you can't just test when you know you look great. Yeah. You, you, you know, you have to, if you, you need to really want the truth so that you can make better decisions because you will see periodically somebody will hold up their meter like online and be like, look at this. I tested six times a day. My blood sugar was always perfect. And I thought, I wonder what their blood sugar would look like if you could see it for 24 hours. You, you know what I mean? Like, where, yeah. where are they in between those tests? Did they just get lucky and test at the right time? Do they just right. know when to test where it, work, where it looks better? Like, are they, mm -hmm. are they gaming the system a little bit, you know? Yeah, and nobody, and there is an element of denial where before I had the CGM, like, I can feel when I'm, like, a little bit higher Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh, I don't even want to know. Like, I just don't even want to test. I'm not going to look. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, I mean, I still would. But I'd just be like, oh, I know it's going to be it's gonna be high. And then, you know, sure enough, it always, if I had that feeling, it was. What do you think that feeling is about? Do you think it's about, I don't want to be shown for sure that I messed this up. I don't want to have to put more effort into this. I, don't, I like, think. What is that part of You it? know. I don't know. And when I first got the CGM, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like being constantly reminded if I have an up, if I'm on the rise or if I'm falling or whatever, because maybe I don't want it to be so prevalent, like everything that's going on with me all the time. And if I messed it up or if I gave too much or not enough or whatever. But, um, so then just the Obviously. super, so the super simple idea of is I just don't want to deal with this right now. Like it's yeah, just, yeah. And I think being more newly diagnosed, it was like, Oh God, like I miss my life where I didn't have to like know this. Yeah. Um, but then once I got my decks and everything, it was like, how did I, I don't know how I survived this long without this. Cause this is the best thing that ever happened. Yeah. No, I agree. It, it, it listen in the end, <clears throat> it really does suck to have diabetes. Like there's no Definitely. way around it. Nobody's going to say otherwise. Um, it, so it's more of a mental leap you have to make. It, it, it really yeah. is like, this is my life. Now let me go have a great life with this. Right. Not My not, life is awesome. And right. I, my motto, my diabetes mo motto is um, lose the battle, win the war. I mean, some days it's like, some days I lose the battle and it's like, there is nothing. I feel like some days I'm just, it's high and it's low and it's high and it's, and other days it's great. And it's like, sometimes you just got to lose the battle and win the war. Um, I'm going to tell you, I think that that might be some of the best uh, advice ever. Honestly, I you just, you can't get stuck on what just happened it, it always has to be no. about moving forward i'm gonna bleep out when you said lose the battle been the born just put in bold with insulin so when people hear they'll hear natalie's voice go yeah. my diabetes motto is then i'll come in doing and, a girl's voice then, i'll be like bold yeah. with insulin bold with and insulin. then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um and then i'll just, or just go put back in to like the, a, a computer voice yes yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. that'd be fantastic i don't um, i don't i don't put that much effort in or i would try that yeah. just to be funny here but yeah. um but but I think seriously what you just said is incredibly important because when you're talking on the diet on the podcast, like when I'm speaking about this, I'm talking about it in a way that's 
informative. And so you don't spend a lot of time while you're being informative telling people, then do it wrong. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're like, hey, this is what I think could eventually lead to that. In the oh, middle, so it, much trial and error. Right, right. The trial and error is so important. Like, try, it, but you have to you have to be willing to see the error as data and not error. It has to be trial and yeah. data. You, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I did this. I, I talk about it all the time. Like, it's simple math. I did A, B happened. Next time, I'd like to see C happen. So next time, I'll try this. And yeah. you know, and and you can't burden yourself with like, oh, I messed it up because you didn't mess it up. You're learning it. You're figuring yeah. it out, or by the way, sometimes it just you're not going to get it right, and that that too's not messing it up. But it's just you have to keep going. If you get mired down in the idea that you're screwing up, this becomes very difficult to do, um, mm-hmm. and, and it becomes very, um, it, it, you know, it's it could be really depressing at that point. Then you know, then you're gonna Definitely. you're gonna burn out. Then if you keep if you keep focusing on that that aspect of it, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think what you said is really important. And actually, I have an episode coming up in the beginning of the new year where we're going to talk to somebody who was completely burned out and depressed. Um, because we don't talk about that enough either. So Yeah, yeah. and it happens for sure. And Yeah, I don't see how it couldn't. I mean, this morning at 4 o'clock, I almost just kept... I, I should have just walked up on the roof and took a swan dive. I was so tired. I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, you know what? You're all on your own. Good luck. Um I'm checking out. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the reasons I got the decks was because I was starting to get so burnt out on, on pricking my finger because I was doing it so much that I was like, I, my fingers are sore at this point. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm like, I don't want to do it. I just don't. I saw somebody and online so, say that the other day. Like, I have to, I have to get a glucose monitor. This guy said, he's like, I can't, I just can't do this anymore. I can't stab myself anymore. Yeah. It gets old. It sucks. Gets old quick. Dancing for Diabetes is passionately committed to the fight against diabetes, and they will continue to serve until a cure is found. Find out more at dancingfordiabetes.com. That's dancing, the number four, diabetes.com, or the links in your show notes or at juiceboxpodcast.com. Like sometimes Arden's like, you know, she's doing her homework and I'll be like, test. And she'll be like, I'm doing my homework. And I'm like, she's like five minutes. And I'm like, five minutes. Later, I'm like, can you test really quick? And she's like, just, okay. and I'm like, you know what? I'll just walk over and like, she'll put her hand up in the air. Yeah. And it's a weird thing, right? Like she's accepting of it. It doesn't stop her from thinking about what she's thinking about. If you told me you were about to like stab my finger and make it bleed, I would stop everything I was doing and be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, don't do this to me. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean, right? And so please, 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 why is this person doing this? But he, she's just mm-hmm. like, here, go do it. But as it's happening, there's this, I don't know how to describe it except for energy around her. And the energy says to me, oh, I wish this wasn't happening. Like, like do, you, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's not, mm-hmm. it's just like, I'm doing it because I have to do it. But if there was a way out of this. I'd really like to know what it is right now. And the technology is getting better and better and better to the point where you have to imagine that someday you won't need a meter. Like it's not now. You still need one now, but I, I, it's gotta be there one day. I I hope, you know, I, for sure. I think for sure. Yeah. Because uh, I did talk to Dr. Oh God, his name just fell right out of my head, but the genteel Lansing device, a gentleman who made that, he was oh, on, yeah. He was on a few episodes ago, and that that's nice, but it's probably not for everybody, you know, because diabetes is an individual disease, as we said earlier. Um, mm-hmm. It's not for everybody, but that might be one option. But it's just in the end, whether it's done by suction or it's done by – it's just – it's a pain in the butt. It stinks. It, it, yeah. You know what I mean? So – I hear you. And it, it just, yeah, it hurts and it's annoying. Yeah, so. right. So you were testing at weird times and giving yourself the the same kind of concept that a glucose monitor would give you. And yes. you, were, you were actually able to, so were you pre, we're just going to call it pre-bolusing, even though you were doing it with needles, but were you giving yourself insulin prior to meals? You know, would you test yes. them a little later and find out, oh, I'm still high and inject again? Like, how did you handle it? Yeah, so... So I didn't realize until I got the pump, but I was essentially like mimicking what you can do with the pump so much, you know, easier. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would give, I would test my blood sugar, give myself a pre-bolus based on what I, what I was going to eat and what my blood sugar was at the time. Right. Um, However, if I was 
more, if I was like, if I was over a hundred, I would do the pre-bolus. If I was like closer to 80, then I would bolus it right before eating. Okay. Um, but did that make you high then? Even though, cause I just had this conversation with my wife the other day. She was like, well, she's 75. So I didn't pre-bolus. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Be- because, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, typically no, because, and this is where I'm saying the MDI is a lot of work, but you can t- totally do it. Go ahead. Is, um, so then after eating shortly after I would give myself like one more unit, just like knock it back with one unit. Right. And then, so basically I was doing an extended bolus with needles, just with needles. Yeah. Right. And, um, the other trick that I have that I'm sure if any endos listening, they're going to be like, what is she talking about? But, um, I would get syringes and this is all just me treating myself like a science experiment. I would get syringes and let's say I needed, you know, four units, Mm -hmm. but my, the fourth unit I would, I would need like more towards the end of the meal. So I would stop from going high later. Okay. I would do like three units. I would draw up three units of Humalog, right? Um, in a in a syringe, and then I would pull up like a unit of regular insulin, like old school regular. Okay. Because it peaks way later, so I would mix them and give myself an injection of the, the concoction. Yeah. And oh my God, does that work? <laughs> you were making a little. How, how did you get them to give you all that different insulin? Were they just they were cool with it? The, well, I think doctor level? my endo like. She thinks I'm insane, but she <laughs> finds me entertaining, I think. So I said, you know, I've been researching, and I, and I know that regular insulin takes longer to peak. And sometimes after I eat, like, a steak or something, I get a delayed spike. Right. Like, the protein spike for me is, like, a couple hours later. Yeah. And I was like, what if I just tried regular? And she was like, I mean whatever, do what you want. Fine. <laughs> if it'll shut you up so and get she, you out of here. <laughs> yeah. And like it, she, it was, I think you can even get it over the counter. Uh, and like, I don't know if they use, I think they use it for like dogs and stuff. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it, as you were explaining it in my mind, here's, here's what I pictured. You draw up four units of insulin. You stick the needle in your arm. You push in three. Then the needle just hangs in your arm for an hour. And then you push the other unit. I was like, is that, oh. what, is that what she's going to say? Because that would be no. insane. That would be really insane. <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about. No, you give yourself the full injection. But but it's a mix the of these peak, two insulins, yeah. Yeah, because the peak time is different. Mm-hmm. It would cover me for, and I would get the best flat line. And once I got the CGM, then I really could see like, oh man, you've got to do, you've got to throw in that unit or two of regular. Um, and that was holding it. Down. Now, did that information that you got back from that experiment, that does that inform how you're using a pump now? Totally. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. Especially on things with that are like, for me, higher things with like higher fat. So Indian food, for example, Every time I eat Indian food, like three hours later, I'll spike. I'll be like smooth sailing all through Indian food. And then three hours later, I think the fat slows down the absorption, right? I was just talking to the, uh, to the mother of a, a child privately the other day. Hey, Deepa, if you're listening, and she was saying the same thing. She's like, oh, Indian food is so hard on my son. And, um, and that's where they were struggling with. It's, it's, it's just interesting you brought that up when I just, somebody else just said it to me two days ago. So. Yeah, it's my favorite food in the world. So I've like figured it out now. Good for and you. If, if you're on MDI, you, like, I swear, the, the regular is the way to do it. Um, but yeah, for, on my pump, I do the same thing. It's like, I'll give myself less of upfront insulin Mm -hmm. and then bump my basal rate up and, or do it, you know, do a temp basal and then extend it for like three hours and put most of it on the extended 
end of it. Right. And I think that's where I'm saying that diabetes is so individual because um, I think certain foods affect people differently and yeah, oh, for sure, and, and stuff like that. So for me, um, that that works you know, for you. Well, well listen, that works. so. I, I will say this, like I'm looking up now, Arden's blood sugar is 97. She's going to need a pre bolus for lunch in 30 minutes. And I've, I'm still hoping she gets a little lower. Um, I pre bolus, mm -hmm. I pre bolus yesterday. I think she was 78 mm -hmm. before lunch. And we, we at 20 minutes before and I really couldn't give her insulin. Then she was like in class. So I just did an extended bolus with nothing up front. So it was like 0% now the rest of it over you know, a half an hour yeah. so that by the time she got there 20 minutes later, most of it was already in, but not all of it was active. And then the rest of it was in and became active. That's one way to do it. Sometimes I'll, you know, if she's a little higher, I'll, I'll give her more up front, extend it out over an hour. And if an hour later, I mean, this year at school, her vibe has been about an hour and 10 minutes after we do that pre bowl is it's possible she'll head up and then we just, as soon as, as soon as we say it, there's more insulin. So, so yeah. if she it's gets, if she gets insulin at 1120 AM and it's some sort of extended bolus and at 1230, she's 120 diagonal up, I bolus more because, oh, for sure. because I've seen, I've seen blood sugars done. I've seen mealtime insulin given perfectly. And when it is given perfectly, your blood sugar does not move. And so no. if it's moving, you missed a little bit. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm going to take a drink because this is going to be me talking for a second. Okay. So Natalie just said something I want to circle back to, right? <clears throat> and let me see if I can focus my mind. Um, oh, my God. It's gone. This is what happens when you get older, Natalie. Try to avoid oh, no. age if you can. Um, <laughs> all right, let me let me just re-engineer this conversation. So we said this and that happened. How did the drink throw me off, Nat? What happened? I was worried uh, about the ice making noise. Let's go backwards in time. We'll try it again. It happened. Okay, then I was going to turn and say, okay, I remember what it was. I did it. Um, Congrats. Thank you so much. So you were talking earlier about about like, you know, I took a unit of this and I mixed it with two units of that. And what I heard, because I've, I've got so much experience talking to other people about diabetes, I hear all the voices of the people listening going, well, wait, how much did she use and how long before? And then how much? And they, because you people listening, you still want an answer. You want like one unit. Oh, yeah. you, want, you want someone to tell you, here's the point where you put in two units. Wait, what did Scott say at 120 up? He bowls his skin. How much does he bowls? Stop worrying about that. Listen to the spirit of what Natalie said. She was an adventurer. She was like, look, I'm going to try something here. You're mixing regular with, 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 you know, Humalog and all this stuff like that is like, that is a person who's like, I wonder what's on the other side of that mountain range. Let's go find out, you, you, you know, uh -huh. and, and that's the takeaway. If, if everyone listening, the takeaway from what Natalie said, isn't the exact amount of insulin she used. It's that she tried. That she was like, hey, I wonder what this will do. Because so much of what's holding you back, I'm talking to the people listening now, so much of what's holding you back is yourself. Is the idea that someone told me this and I think this is the rule, so I don't want to buck the rule. But I feel in my gut that it's not. Like I can tell it's not, but I can't make myself break free and try. I tell people all the time, you know, when I'm talking to them privately and they're like, well, okay, so you're saying more insulin at that point. I'm like, yes. Then their very next question is always, how much? And I always say, I don't know. Yeah, you have to figure that out. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There's no, there's no magic number. Do you think there's a calculator here that someone didn't share with you? You, you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. mo more blood sugars higher, more. And that's why I started talking about like, um, if you have a Dexcom, I talk about like stopping the arrow. Like when I see the arrow move, yes. I think I need to stop the arrow. And how much well, insulin actually, does that? I don't know. As much as it takes know. to stop it. And, and that's another thing that sort of is intuitive. And I, from listening to the podcast, and, and I've heard you say, you know, right when you see that arrow, just sort of like bump it down. Mm -hmm. And that's like some of the best advice that I've gotten from, from listening to your podcast. Because cool. um, there's been times where I see the arrow and I'll just, even if it's like, even if I'm like, it's like 107 or something and mm -hmm. I've just eaten, but there's a little thing. I'll just say, mm, I'll throw in 
I'll throw in a half a unit and like see what happens. Or I'll just, you know, bump my temp basil up for a minute and sort of like see how this goes. And it always knocks me right back in. And so there's two things there. First of all, everyone errs on the side of caution. Most of the time you end up needing more insulin than you think anyway. And you oh, can, yeah, you always. can always bolus using the juice box theory, which is not specific to the, to the show, but to the idea of there was this time that, um, <clears throat> the lead up's not important, but Arden was getting high at a sporting event from adrenaline and, mm-hmm. It is difficult to talk yourself into bolusing your, you know, back then eight or nine year old when she walks into a gymnasium to play basketball and her blood sugar is 100. <clears throat> it right. is hard to tell yourself her adrenaline is going to kick in in 10 minutes and she's going to have needed insulin. It is hard to make that decision to bolus a 100 and then send somebody out to do something. Yeah. And so one day I realized, look, I'm seeing this happen every time. I have to do something. How can I decide how much insulin to use? And then I said, ooh. I'll bolus the amount I know a juice box can catch. And then I just said, okay, that back then it was like a unit and a half. I was like, here's a unit and a half. And sure enough, the adrenaline tried to kick in, but the unit and a half was working and it worked. And I was like, yay, but my, my safety net was the juice box theory, which was if this goes wrong, I'll just give her the juice box. Totally. Right. Yeah. If it goes wrong, my, my juice box is a roll of Smarties. There you go. Nice. I'm like, cause sometimes I'm like, Hmm, if this goes terribly wrong, half a roll of Smarties will fix it. Right. <laughs> See, Natalie has the Smarties theory. I have the juice box theory. Yeah. Yeah. And you at home should have. Choose your own adventure. Yes, exactly. It's like dragon's lair, <laughs> except you don't always die. Right. Totally. Away. Yeah. Yeah. So you, but, but there's yeah. like five old people who are like, I remember dragon's lair. That was a terrible video game. Uh, but, <laughs> but, um, you're just like, I'm going to say yes, but I don't know what the hell dragon's lair is. Um, but, but you know, that, that's such an, ex- it's such an important idea. Like figure out what you're smart parties are you, you know yeah. like figure out where how you can do this it's you have to trust yourself and try things you can't just sit back and wait for someone to tell you hey this is the spot 23 minutes 23 minutes and 18 seconds after this you need to put in 1.4759 units like no yeah. one you're never going to get that answer just no. figure it out you have to try don't be scared you can't be afraid you got to try you know you, you got to yeah, you gotta yeah, you throw yourself try into to do it. it. And and test, you know, don't be don't be silly. Don't start giving yourself a ton of insulin and going, this is probably okay. You know, if you don't have mm-hmm. a C, if you don't have a CGM, if you don't have a Dexcom, then test. If you have a Dexcom, pay attention to it. Test mm-hmm. still if you feel like you have to. But you can't just sit back and hope that someone's gonna give you some static answer. There are almost literally no static answers in diabetes. No. And then it's always right when you figure it out, it's like you get a curveball. Oh yeah, absolutely. So another thing that really helped me was with my basal insulin when I was doing MDI, actually splitting the dose. So um, a lot of people, you know, you take 16 units or whatever at night or however many units you need, right? Mm. At night, you just take it all or at, in the morning, whatever time you usually take it, you take the whole thing. But um, I learned that splitting it in half and taking for me one in the morning and one at night was so like I had such a better line. I mean, it was just like a straight, whereas if I took it all at night, then maybe at three o'clock in the afternoon, the next day I would go a little higher or whatever. So splitting your dose of whatever you take, Traceba or Lantus or whatever you're on, um, I think that really helps. We did that too with Arden. Um, despite what your package insert says, that insulin doesn't last 24 hours. So no, which is how you end up with a low at some point. You have to think of that slow acting insulin as <clears throat> like a bank account of insulin. You, you know, you, you inject it all and it crystallizes under your skin. And then for the lack of a more specific term, it melts away slowly holding down your blood sugar. Um, Mm -hmm. but there are moments when it can, uh, you know, melt away quicker or slower or too soon. And then, you know, you hear a lot of people say, Oh, like, you know, I, I take my slow acting insulin in the morning, but 
you know, I start getting high about 20 hours later. Well, it's because the slow acting insulin's pretty much gone. Yeah, so split right. it. So split so it up. Split it. So it's always there. Yeah. And you might have to change your dose, by the way, when you do that. Like in your example of 16, it might not end up being eight and eight. It could end up being more. It could end up yeah. being less. It could be end up being more on one side and less on the other side. But and again, also, I think the other thing is pay attention to if you're running high for a couple of days, then go bump up your units. Mm-hmm. Don't be like, well, I'm supposed to be 20 units. So it's like maybe you need 26 units. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, more. Um, well, that's uh, back to what I said. If your blood sugar is high, you need more insulin. It's just right. Ar- listen, Arden's last, <clears throat> her next endo appointment coming up, whenever it ends up being, whatever A one C is going to be, this is the time. If her A one C is not higher and significantly higher than her last one, because her last one was five six, that one was like, awesome. I walked out of there, I was like, we're never doing that again. And you know, and so, <laughs> but but her, she's been growing exponentially so she's getting taller and stronger and like this is all happening like very quickly and Mm -hmm. i am it's the point where i always hear people go oh wait wait till puberty comes and everything's gonna get out of whack everything didn't get out of whack like i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it on the line right now and bet bet right now that her her a1c is going to go up but it's not gonna like leave the sixes and go go to eight or something yeah yeah. that when that happens that's when you're like oh high blood sugar again i guess i'm not gonna do anything about it i've just been fighting more with it. I haven't had as many, yeah. like, like I'm looking at Arden's line right now. I can actually click on it here. Um, her last six hours look like she doesn't have diabetes. And I'm more often than not was able to accomplish that in the past. This last three months, it's not so much. There's been spikes and they've hung for a little bit and I've had to be really aggressive with them and come back at them. But Keep in mind what that means is that, like, you know, when I say to you, like, orange blood sugar got out of hand, I'm talking about, like, it was, like, 160. Yeah, that's, I feel the same way. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man, I'm so high. And then it's, like, you know, it's, like, 155. And other people are like, oh, I feel great at 155. And I'm like, well, then you don't know what 80 feels like because 80 feels Magical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's magic. Well, that's a great example if, if, you know, I don't know what my blood sugar is right now, but it's probably not over 90, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't have diabetes. So if you're if you're running around going, my blood sugar is 180. Yours is double what mine is, and you know, and it so, feels like garbage. <laughs> yeah, it it it, 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 yes, it just slows everything down, right? Like you just yeah. feel crappy. Yeah. Natalie, we have gone over an hour. Oh my gosh! Talking to me just it's magical. It goes by so quickly. It's just such yeah, an experience. Really, it's true. I like the way you said that. Um, I'm, I want you to know right now, I'm leaning very heavily towards calling this episode Jimmy Diabetes, and um, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen in the end because when I go back and edit it, I could be inspired by something else you've said. But um, at the moment, I have a strong feeling about Jimmy Diabetes. I'm glad. Go with your gut. Let's go with. You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. a wonderful excellent so i'm gonna say goodbye uh-huh. and thank you for coming on then i'm gonna say goodbye like a real person after i uh after i uh stop the recording so i really appreciate you coming on and sharing uh you know your life with type one it, it it means a lot to people everybody does the same thing when they they go to come on the podcast like well i don't have anything to say or i don't know if what i'm going to say is going to be valuable but i i want everyone listening to know that everyone who you've enjoyed listening to on the podcast thinks that <laughs> They go, well, yeah, you know, yeah, well, thanks for having me. And I hope that, I hope that, um, if anybody's on MDI listening, that this somehow helps because, um, you know, I just want everybody to feel good. So it really is it, right? Once you know how it feels to feel good, you really do want it for everybody else. You just think, mm-hmm. oh, I wish, I wish I could explain this to other people. Do you talk about diabetes on your Instagram, which I think is where we met? I don't really. No. I do sometimes. Um, but it's, I'm just not that, I don't know. I, I think I would like have a whole separate account because I could talk about it all day long. I don't, you know, I, um, I'm not ashamed of it or anything. I just don't really talk about it that much. Yeah, it's because fun. I know what you mean. Also, it, it, it's obviously a huge part of my life, but it's also not my life, right? right. It's a very small part not of my life at the I same am. time. Yeah. Yeah. It's la- just last night, Arden, Arden met somebody online 
and um, on on Instagram, it's a, a person her age, and who has diabetes. And I, I actually, I know they talk. And I said to her last night, I was like, "How did you meet this person?" She goes, "I don't know. I think maybe they found you first, like the podcast or something, <laughs> and then through Instagram figured out that you know you're not art, and and then figured out where I was." Uh-huh. And she's like, I really like this person. They, and they have a really nice relationship and everything. But then she said, I said, oh, because um, I thought you just found her. She goes, no, no, no. She goes, but she is one of those people who has T1D in her profile. And I was like, oh, yeah. it was such an interesting statement. Like, she's one of those people who puts T1D in her profile because Arden never hides her diabetes. Like, you'll see pictures of Arden all over the place. If she takes a picture and her pump's in it, she doesn't think twice about that. If her, dude, she doesn't, Dexcom sticking on her hip while she's oh, at yeah, no. the pool, never thinks twice about it, and yet never talks about diabetes. And yeah. so it, it's interesting how her, I don't know, like, it, 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 she's not an advocate on her own, but sometimes just living, you can be an advocate just by being yourself out in the world you don't have to specifically talk about it i guess to yeah you know it's just a very i mean i guess for me it's like it's like you know my eyes are blue i don't put in my profile i have blue eyes it's like i just do (laughs) you know what i mean Uh, that's it's just uh, i'm glad we ended with that because that's it's i think it's an interesting distinction so all right i'm gonna say goodbye right here all right goodbye Thank you, Natalie, for coming on the show and sharing your life with type 1 diabetes. Thank you, Dancing for Diabetes. Thank you, Dexcom. Thank you, Omnipod. You can check out all the sponsors at juiceboxpodcast.com or use the links that are in your show notes.